Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson, we will explore what happens when a parametric family inside a Revit project is updated using the new component family node. We will also examine why this update may not always behave as expected. To begin, we have already opened our project document. Alongside it, we have also opened the parametric family we created in the previous lesson. This setup will help us to observe the changes in both the project environment and the family editor at the same time. Let us begin by activating the new component family. As we adjust the width slider in Grasshopper to change the foundation's width, the component runs but returns an error message. It says, constraints are not satisfied. Visually, the family seems to update. We can see the width change in both the project and the family document. But something important happens inside the family. The dimension still exists, but the label that was tied to the width parameter has been removed. Revit breaks the parameter constraint. The dimension becomes static and is no longer linked to the parameter. Now if we recompute the grasshopper definition and run the update again, there is no error. Everything looks fine, but the parametric link has already been lost. The same thing happens if we adjust the length slider. The dimension updates visually but it is no longer tied to the length parameter. The family has become purely geometry based and is no longer driven by Revit parameters. So why does this happen? I believe the main reason is that when the new component family updates the geometry, it replaces the original geometry inside the family. When that happens, Revit seems to lose track of the internal references that were previously linked to the dimensions and parameters. Even though the reference planes and dimensions remain in the family, their associations become invalid. As a result, Revit removes the dimension labels and converts them into fixed values, breaking the parametric control. But there is a solution. If we reassign the dimension labels to the existing length and width parameters, something changes. This time, when we adjust the sliders in Grasshopper, the geometry updates and the dimension labels remain intact. This means the updated geometry is now being correctly controlled by Revit parameters. Even better, if we change the parameter values inside Revit, the family responds accordingly. And when we recompute the Grasshopper script, the geometry updates and the parameter values in Revit are refreshed. Why does it work now? It seems that when we manually reassign the labels after the first geometry update, we established a new link to the updated geometry references inside the family. From that point on, as long as we do not delete or replace those reference planes and dimensions, Revit appears to maintain the parameter bindings consistently across future updates. Also, make sure that the override parameters option is set to true in the new component family. This ensures that any updates to geometry or parameter values are applied correctly and the family continues to respond as expected in the project environment. With this setup, we gain a flexible and reliable workflow. Our Revit family can be controlled directly within Revit using its parameters or externally through Grasshopper using parametric geometry. And that wraps up this lesson. Thank you for following along and I will see you in the next one.